Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. My name's Harry. I'm a director, stop-motion animator, and a self-taught sculptor. And uh, I've never really shared a lot of behind the scenes of my work, and so I thought today it would be cool to show a little insight into how I made this uh, Killsbury Doughboy. So let's get into it. I'm gonna start by cutting some wire and taping it together to make just a very crude armature. It doesn't need to be super robust. Just need to get uh, a little bit of a skeleton in there to support the doughboy's arms and legs. Bend it into shape here. And from there, I'm gonna bulk up the body with aluminum foil. Polymer clay is pricey, and this is a great way to save on clay and also keep your sculptures lightweight. And once I've got it roughly how I want it, I can go in with the polymer clay and start sculpting. And right now I'm not really trying to get anything smooth or super finessed. I'm really just trying to get coverage over the whole body. Continuing bulking out the legs and adding more clay. So once we've got full coverage, I can go in with some extra little beans of clay and start finessing the forms a little bit. From there, I can take my pliers and go ahead and snip off the excess armature wire. I'm going in with some extra balls of clay to just finesse the forms of the hands. The doughboy doesn't have fingers or anything fancy going on there, so right now I'm really just looking at rough shapes. From there, I'm gonna add this toothpick to provide support for the head, and you guessed it, more aluminum foil to bulk out the head. Do a little test fit there, looks good, and so I'll cover that with polymer clay as well. Once I'm happy with the rough size, I'll take a little snake of clay and just start blending it into the body. I've pre-baked the body at this point since I'm happy with the shape and that'll prevent any damage to it while I'm working on the head. There you can see I'm taking another little tool and just starting to rough in guidelines for the eyes and mouth. Not looking for detail here, I'm just trying to get my proportions roughed in. And here I'm beginning to carve out the mouth. He's a monster doughboy, so he's gonna have a big gaping maw full of sharp teeth. Uh, taking the paintbrush again to finesse the forms there. And I like the back of the paintbrush. It's just sort of a rounded dowel shape, and I find with polymer clay, it's really good for finessing forms. There I'm taking another little ball of clay, and again using the back of the paintbrush, just roughing in the shape of the nose. The doughboy doesn't have a very defined nose, it's just a little sort of fleshy lump in the middle of his head. And here I'll just go in and blend all that together with my fingers until I get something roughed in. Now we're roughing in his bandana, kerchief, whatever you want to call it, and again using the back of the paintbrush to suggest some wrinkles in the fabric. You can see I'm working it very quickly, and with just a few swipes of the back of the paintbrush, we're able to get a good suggestion of fabric wrinkles. And then I'm going in with my blade tool and cutting a sharp edge on the back of the fabric. Next, we'll rough in some eyes for the doughboy, just a couple little marble-shaped lumps of clay that I'm pressing in, and then using a softened paddle tool to define the edges and integrate them with the rest of the face. Using the back of the paintbrush once again, I can start roughing in some wrinkles and some more detailed forms on the face, as well as putting in two little snakes of clay for the doughboy's gums and finessing them with the paddle tool. Here we'll take the paddle tool and start carving in some more detailed forms around the doughboy's eyes, eye bags, and wrinkles, and all those extra little things that make him look super monstrous. And you can't have a monster without a big angry eyebrow, so we're going to take some little snakes of clay and just start roughing in that expression. We'll add a couple little banana shapes to his bandana, 
and again rough in some wrinkles with the back of the paintbrush. And then continue building up the forms on his forehead with little sausages of clay to create the feeling of puckered skin. And blend those in with the paddle tool. And he's starting to look pretty good, pretty angry. But he needs some teeth. So using the back of a toothpick, I'm going to go into the gums and press little holes for the teeth. And I've pre-made the teeth by rolling little cones of polymer clay and pre-baking them. And from there, we just use a tweezer and they place right into the holes that we've pre-registered for them, creating a nice, monstrous mouth. Another little snake of clay to create a top lip, blending it in with whatever I have handy, in this case, uh, the side of a toothpick. I'm not big on fancy tools. I'm self-taught and I have a habit of just kind of grabbing whatever's around. <laughs> Finessing again with the scoop tool, really starting to carve in some defined wrinkles under the eyes. And then we'll take the other side of that tool, which is kind of a chisel point, and carve in little wrinkle lines on the lips to make them look dry and crackled. And we'll use that same tool to carve in some more defined lines on the forehead. finish out his kerchief with a little knot, just a square of clay, and again taking the paddle tool just to rough in some fabric lines there. Now that the face is pretty much all there, I'm going to take my paintbrush and some isopropyl alcohol and brush it over the whole surface. This breaks down the polymer clay just a little bit and removes any harsh tool lines, fingerprints, stuff like that. And then as a finishing touch, I'm gonna take my chisel tip and carve in some little pock marks on the doughboy's cheeks. For his hat, we're gonna follow the same process, roughing in the shape with some aluminum foil and then covering that in a thin layer of clay. To get the pleats of the hat, I've made these little cone shapes that I'm gonna place around the circumference of the hat and then blend in to create the look of gathered fabric. Fit it right onto the head there and start blending it into the forehead. And that's looking pretty good. For the base of the hat, I'm going to roll out a thin sheet of polymer clay and use the chisel tip to cut a nice sharp edge. Then we can simply wrap it around the base and we've got a pretty good looking chef's hat. Finish it off with his little badge, and he's looking ready to bake. But a monster doughboy wouldn't be complete without a severed finger that he's finally removed from the hand forever taunting him by poking his belly. So to do that, we're going to start the same way, roll a little log shape out of aluminum foil and then cover that with clay. And again, you guessed it, taking our trusty back of a paintbrush, start smoothing out and roughing in those forms and I can use it to very quickly create the suggestion of a fingernail, as well as the little wrinkles on the knuckle. Luckily, I've got a good reference in my own hands right there. And from there, I can take the paddle tool and carve in some finer details. We'll add a little cylinder for the finger bone and rough in some detail with the back of the brush, pushing it into the clay to create some gnarly flesh. and then detailing it by carving in some finer gashes with the chisel tool. To create fine skin texture, one of my favorite tricks is to wrap the whole thing in plastic wrap and then lightly scrape across it with a toothpick or other sharp point. The plastic wrap softens the toothpick tip and when you peel it off, you get a pretty great looking skin texture. So now it's time to move on to paint. 
I've primed the doughboy off camera with a gray spray paint. And then it's simply a matter of going in with lots and lots of coats of off-white, followed by detailing his hat and kerchief with a bright white. From there I'm going to take a raw umber wash, watered down pretty thin, and paint that all over his face to bring out the finer details that I've carved in. We'll do the same thing around the eyes with a purple wash to make them look sickly and sunken. I did a black wash inside the mouth off camera, and now we're going to paint in his gums with more of that sickly purple color. To detail the kerchief and hat, we'll take some dark gray and paint it into the recesses. Then wet blend with the white to create a nice gradation. There are other ways to do this, say with an airbrush or some other fancier techniques, but I like my sculptures to have a little bit of a rustic handmade feel. So this wet blending works well for that and creates a really nice effect. Next we'll pop out the teeth with a little bit of white. And it's always satisfying seeing that go on. And then finally we'll take some dark blue and paint in the details on his hat and his eyeballs. I like to save the eyes for last because I feel like that's really what brings creatures to life. And it's satisfying seeing the whole face come together in that final step. The paint job on the finger is really simple. I'm going to take that same umber wash and let it sink into the recesses of the wrinkles I've carved and then go in with a very light dry brush of a lighter flesh tone to pick up the highlights. From there I just need to paint some off-white for the bone and go in with some bright red for the blood. And it's looking pretty good. Now all that's left is to glue the two together and mount it on a base. So let's take a look at the finished Killsbury Doughboy. This project was a lot of fun, and it's been cool sharing some insight into my process. I hope you enjoyed watching, and if you did, like and subscribe for more videos.